This video is supported by Moises Nohut. To make this crazy video happen, I had to carefully listen to all the Metallica songs again, inspect over 200 isolated tracks again, and check out dozens of interviews, books, documentaries, and make it up again. Hi, friends! It's Andriy Vasilenko, and I love X. Of course, we are talking about the hidden guitar, bass, vocal parts, hidden instruments, hidden references, hidden fuck ups, all sorts of hidden stuff that Metallica left in their songs deliberately or by accident. Stuff you might need more than one listen to catch. Or only with the help of, say, guitar-only tracks. In other words, stuff that's made this channel as you know it now, things you might not notice, you remember that. And today it's time to do something that I've been thinking for all these years. To gather all the easter eggs of Metallica in one video, including some newfound ones, such as a mysterious guitar trick in Battery and Fade to Black, the only lyric in Suicide and Redemption instrumental, the Saint Anger snare on Load, and something unbelievable that James Hetfield did in Seek and Destroy. Luckily, our favorite f band is very generous with uh, Easter eggs, and to a great extent, we should thank the isolated guitar, bass, drum, and vocal tracks, most of which you can find on YouTube. Those are the separate tapes that Metallica recorded for each uh, instrument, for each part. And those often contain the curious, obscure stuff that is just buried in the loudness of the mix. Master! Master! <sighs> as well as the geeky nuance and how to play the riffs, note for note. <laughs> But unluckily, not all Metallica songs are available as stems, only like 40 out of over a hundred. And so what about the residual 70-ish tracks? Well, there is a couple ways to get the X out of that. Firstly, the Black Album exists in the surround sound, as well as the music videos of Metallica released on DVD. You can get five tracks out of that, and the instruments are not completely separate there, but that's better than nothing. It hates you so at least it helps to get uh, Jason Muse's bass parts more clear. There's no music videos with Cliff Burton to break those down that way, but... Another kind of handy material is so-called rough mixes. Metallica totally kicked ass when they put this kind of stuff on Master and Justice reissues. I was especially excited to hear Lap by Messiah and to listen to that with the boosted bass of Cliff and Jason respectively. With the boosted bass of Cliff and Jason respectively. <laughs> But still, like, a half of all Metallica songs remain kind of locked up. And so, basically, the only option left is breaking into Metallica HQ and stealing all the master tapes. And so, are you ready, guys? Vice and Dick are already on the way, and we're gonna meet at... You must die! Second. Friend Inc., how can I help you? Really? Awesome. Thank you, I'll call you back later. Um... Seems like we got another alternative to get the isolated tracks, and so I think I have to cancel Metal Raid. Um... Hui! Mission aborted! Mission aborted! Right, man! We already tied up Lars and ate all of his snacks! <laughs> Blood. Imagine if hypothetically Robert Trujillo gives up playing bass and goes to Hollywood to become a new Danny Trejo. Or Kirk hypothetically says fuck this shit and leaves Metallica to become Megadeth bassist. Well, I hope that's the day that never comes. But okay, hypothetically, you got a shot to become a member of Metallica. To penetrate the f band of blood. Anyway, if you love playing along your favorite songs and you want to get more progress and fun doing that, well, that may require all kinds of f rounds. Say, when I'm jamming Load and Reload or Metallica Lab performances. In both cases, they use the E flat tuning. I'm just too lazy to tune my bass down, so I'd rather tune the band up. Or when I need to adjust the BPM, say to slightly slow down Master of Puppets or Creeping Death live version, say by 5 or 10 percent, which YouTube does not allow, it's minimum like 25 percent. Or of course, when I need to boost or isolate certain parts, well, that may seem like too much to ask, right? But all those tricks and even more now can be found in one place. Meet Moises! Change the pitch, change the speed, cut or isolate any part you need for a better practice.
don't know more, just download the app and become the next Metallica bassist. This could be the only way you could tell Lars what to do and to make him count in properly. Oops. Moises also shows you the BPM and the chords in real time as the song plays. There's both free and premium version and the free one is pretty much enough for you to understand if you if, 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 to learn if the app really what you need. It definitely is to me and I'm really excited to see how Moises grow because they always add new features and improve the existing ones and it's freaking AI, it learns fast. And so with time the track isolation already the best you can find, will only get better. Be the first to try the historic app, link in description. And the first 10 people to sign up and who send me their email they signed up with, they will get 3 months of free premium, 3 months of unlimited fun. So you can play around all the Metallica songs, isolate any part you want and yeah, if you found anything curious there, please uh, let me know. Thanks to Moises for making my music life so much easier, thanks for such a fun collaboration and thanks for the extra inch. The burp in Hit the Lights. Hit the lights! lights, 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 lights. <coughs> and also the quiet guitar that's following it. Hit the lights! Lights, 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 lights. And it's funny that in Megadeth we can find the sound of the bottle opening. Tease. And in Metallica we have James Hetfield burping all the time. <laughs> Cliff Burton's wah in Seek and Destroy. The only time Cliff Burton used his wah outside his bass solos. And here's the one I could not believe. In Seek and Destroy, where Kirk plays those little solo fills. Underneath those little solos, James is playing open 8 notes. And you would suppose that he's down picking all of them, because that's what he's doing live. And because that's James. But no, in the studio he's using the alternative strokes. You can tell that's not down picking because of the swingy pulsing kind of sound in that. Otherwise, that would be all dead even. Fight fire with fire. The explosion in the outro was not actually an explosion. That was done somehow with the guitar amp. And the intro... There is a hidden instrument underneath, the harpsichord. Was that really Cliff who dropped the F-bomb? Because I'm in the minority that thinks that's Burton and not James, but it's likely James's job. But I'm so not wanted to ruin the whole meme, so yeah. The bell was actually not a bell, but an anvil and a hammer. Ride the lightning, Lars screaming. And we can tell this Lars because that squeaky voice we cannot be mistaken. In Ride the Lightning, the song, there's basically a bass solo no one knew existed like even 10 years ago. We cannot really hear the bass in the mix and only thanks to the isolated tracks, all of a sudden an entire bass solo like 20 years after Cliff's passing, hidden in the very recordings we've been hearing all the decades. Fade to black. You can hear the keys in the intro, but you cannot hear those in the verses. They repeat the vocal line of James and I suggest that because we cannot hear them in the mix it was deliberately so buried and the function was just to guide James in this in doing the vocal part. For the first time James actually tried to sing the melody in Metallica and he needed some assistance. Life it seems will fade away. But there's one easter egg that is there because Metallica told so but I cannot hear it. Flamin Grasmussen, who was responsible for recording Metallica on this album, says that in the intro, in the acoustic parts of Fade to Black, they use kind of double reverse guitar. James recorded the parts backwards 
and then they backwarded back, sort of, kind of thing. I suppose it's supposed to be something like this. The reverse sound is peculiar, you cannot mistake in it, and uh, I just cannot hear that in Fade to Black. And the same thing, according to Flaming Rasmussen, was done in Battery Intro, but I just can't hear that. Maybe you can, please write in the comments where I missed it. And you might have known the story that Metallica did not have an acoustic guitar in the studio when recording the album, and so they had to borrow it in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. And it's weird that at the studio they could not find such a basic instrument, an acoustic guitar, but they could find a fucking harpsichord and anvil. In Sanitarium, firstly, there is a piano underneath the clean guitar. And also in Sanitarium, the chorus riff, there is a harmony that I thought was only on the demo and it didn't make it to the studio version. But it's actually there. Listen carefully. Lepe Messiah at the end someone says either that it was sick or that was it or that was shit, you choose. <laughs> Master of Puppets the song is notorious for featuring mistakes by all the Metallica members, even by Cliff Burton. <laughs> but the most famous one is by Kirk Hammett. A note in the solo that slipped on the fretboard. <laughs> but it sounded so cool and Kirk's always tried to make that mistake again but failed. Also, which is quite fascinating, I, I did not notice it before I googled it. In the third verse of Master of Puppets, Jim sings Hell is worth all that! Natural habitat! Just a rhyme without a reason! Because that's what it is. James literally points out he does not know what to write there. And also I thought to include the outro, the reverse guitar, but when I reversed it back to hear what they played originally. There's nothing special there, just random notes. But there's actually a curious reverse guitar lick coming up. In Disposable Heroes we hear Kill Em All. Friend to kill them all! That's got to be mentioned, so yeah. Orion. Oh my god, where do I start? It deserves an entire video to break down what is hidden in Orion. I'll just put here the mystery clean guitar lick that no one plays and it's not on the official tabs and even it's not in the isolated track where it's supposed to be. I have a dedicated video to this kind of mystery. Finally, Damage Incorporated, the last song of the whole Cliff Burton era. The bass intro is inspired by Bach and its bass. Lots of bass, lots of effects, you know it, I don't count it as it's direct. But what it is, is the breakdown. And I insist there is distortion bass there, following the power chord. It feels like there's something a whole octave lower than the guitar. Something like... Pepper. Whoa. This kind of spatial sound, similar to what Cliff Burton did in Orion intro. Injustice for All. And no, I'm not gonna say that bass is the hidden easter egg there. In black and we have the kind of dive bomb. And here comes the biggest cheat. The copy-pasted choruses. We can catch those in the shortest straw. In the Justice for All. Pulling your string. Pulling your string. But we should not blame Metallica for cheating. Man, even by listening to those vocal tracks, you will cough blood. Imagine what James had to go through. So they had to spare his vocal cords by just copy pasting and not risking the entire fucking James's throat. In their Steve at the end, what do you think James is saying? No. Now we enter the 90s, the time Metallica got Bob Rock, and that's the time they started putting in weird stuff in their songs. On the Black Album we hear lots of extra instruments and, and stuff, and so let's put all of that as one huge easter egg, and the 12 string bass, I would mention it especially. Because I would never tell that's 12 string bass. Kajong. It does not sound like that. I suppose it's gonna be like very massive, all the range of notes, but it sounds like something they would have done with regular instruments, but 
They say nothing worked until they got a 12 string motherfucker. We tried 8 and that wouldn't work, so we went to 12. Wolf and Man, the hidden clean guitar. Then Forgiven, the low acoustic in the middle. And the very bell from the bell tools. And in nothing less matters, we can hear a some sort of F bomb. No! But was it actually? Who knows? Tell me in the comments. Similar to the Black Album, Load and Reload has lots of weird hidden instruments and ways of playing guitar techniques. And so we put all of them as one big easter egg with a couple honorable mentions. Hero of the day in the outro of it, cello. As well as until it sleeps, we have something similar to other muted guitar or cello. And also until it sleeps, after the first verse, James quietly say then King Nothing, you might have known, it's the entire song referencing to Enter Sandman, the structure, the riffs, the dynamics, and at the very end of it Metallica admits it itself with the Off to never, never, off to never, never land. The classic easter egg. But besides that, in the outro is the hidden guitar that repeats Kirk's lead, but as a kind of riff. And the same way in Unforgiven 2, obviously the continuation in Unforgiven 1, with lots of references in the lyrics, in the music, the horn in the beginning, and at the end they straight put the melody from the Unforgiven 1. The memory remains, which to me is the weakest single Metallica ever released, not the worst song, but among the singles, it's the laziest composition. And ironically, it has the most easter egg than probably any Metallica song. Firstly, it has several references to Fade to Black. In the lyrics, they straight up mention Fade to Black. Fade to Black! And the very riff reminds the middle section from Fade to Black 2. <laughs> One of the times James sings the name of the song, he actually sings not the memory remains, but the memories remain. <laughs> The na 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 section. It has lots of layers and instruments. Could you hear the acoustic guitar there? As well as the old lady Marianne underneath her moaning, she says, Say yes, at least say hello. Say yes. Da, 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 da. Say hello. Whatever that means, the song that Metallica has to play live eventually, fix her. The intro, you can hear the reverse guitar there. What is that? It's actually part of the main riff. Very simple, but still kind of ingenious. Mama said, one of the least metallic-ish songs ever, which I really love actually. Really good take on country and stuff. And so what a surprise it was to me when in the middle of the song I heard Sintinger Snare. And speaking of Saint Anger Snare, we should mention that I Disappear had it before the album. And everybody kind of missed that warning. Right, here's the thing. At this point of making the video, I already hate everything, especially my neighbors. And I had to cut like a half of all the things I wanted to include in the video. Mostly things that are less curious and where I just talk too much. Including the entire Saint Anger and Hardwired albums. Because those had like a couple easter eggs and even those were like Meh. And so what are I gonna do with those leftovers? All stuff that I cut from this video will go as a podcast, especially for the real geeks. And I will publish that podcast sometime next week, I believe. I'll let you know in the community tab, so if anything, subscribe. Or if you are watching this in the future, link in the description. Cyanide, the intro is Metallica trying to make SOS as riff. And in the outro, James saying suicide very quietly. My Apocalypse has Death Magnetic, the name of the album mentioned, so in some way is the title track. Death Magnetic! It's an obvious one, but I got to mention it. And also in that spit it out part, 
you can hear the cut, which seems like James first said spit out, and then he cut it spit it out. Yeah, just, just listen to it. Split apart, split, spit it out! In the end of the line, the song that could have been better in my opinion, there's a really kicking ass riff laying beneath the harmony. And on top of it, it basically has set by true vocal line and welcome home riff. The day that never comes, it also has piano, just like in Sanitarium. And also there's multiple tiny easter eggs, size of Calibri eggs probably, throughout the song, just listen to the other tracks, you'll catch them. And here's the coolest one on the album to me. The only lyric, the only vocals on the instrumental. The one word, and guess what it is? It's yeah. Or maybe it's Dave? Or maybe that's just the guitar noise that seems like a human voice. It's called, uh, I think, pareidolia. So what do you think? All right, again, half of all the Easter eggs, the more boring ones go to podcast. And also I remind you to try Moises. It's, it's really cool. I'm not bullshitting. All the links are here. And also, as you might have seen, I've collaborated with Dennis Pana and the collaboration is coming up on the Loads anniversary. Yeah, it's been a crazy one. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. It's Andriy Vasilenko and be in metal.